Hey, we've got another piece of Tektronix test equipment on the bench here today. This is a TM501 power module. Uh, this is used for the uh, TM500 series, uh, like test equipment modules, kind of like oh, this one here. I've shown these in uh, previous videos. So this sort of thing will just slide in and um, this is the power supply to turn this on and then you can use it. What's this one? This one is a uh, function generator. And there's a whole, like, like I guess probably a hundred different types of modules you can get and they all have different functions and uh, different purposes. So uh, this one here, as I said, you can just do one module at a time, but there are like two, three, four, five, and six. So we're going to restore this and get it to uh, full working condition again. Uh, I actually have a few of these uh, in various stages of restoration, so I'll be flicking back and forth between them just because it's easy to grab them out and show you like the capacitors and this and that and whatever else rather than do it all at once on, on the single one, um, seeing as I've got them there. Anyway, so uh, first of all, we'll open this up and have a look inside. This one hasn't been restored at all, hasn't been touched, so we'll see what needs to be done and then we'll work on from there and I'll show the, um, the different stages on the other units. So getting inside these is really easy, it's just two screws on the top, uh, posi drive, not Phillips head, not Phillips drive, it's a slightly different posi drive. If you work on Tektronix and HP equipment, do make sure to buy a, um, a PZ1 and a PZ2, this is the larger one, the PZ2, uh, and um, yeah, use the correct screwdriver, because um, if you use a Phillips screwdriver in a posi drive screw, it does fit, but it's loose and it doesn't fit properly and you'll round out the screws and... Um, yeah, just damage things. So invest in some posi drive screwdrivers and uh, you will have a, a much better experience. So here we've got a uh, rather dirty inside. Oh, um, basically the, the module comes in here. It's got a guide rail. That's the power cord I just tucked in there. So I'll get that out of the way. And then um, you've got the rod for the power switch. It feels a bit blare, but um, the power switch is just here. And then it comes out to the front panel to turn it on and off. There's no um, power indicators on the front, but it does look like there's some mouldings for uh, some front panel, like BNCs or something, if you wanted to wire those in, I guess you could do that. Drill the holes and uh, uh, put the BNCs on the front panel there. It's not documented, I haven't seen any documentation explaining that you can do that, but it looks like you probably could if you wanted to. Anyway, the, um, uh, the main guts of it are back here, so let's zoom in and see what we got. So... We've got the uh, voltage selection here. Um, this is a later model, like a later version. If, you, if it's before the uh, 50,000 um, serial number, B0500000, uh, it's like a, um, it's a, I think the transformer is only good for 100 volts, 115 volts, that sort of range. So you can only just do a slight adjustment. But if it's after the B0500000, then... Um, you are uh, you can adjust for 240 volts and 115 volts and 100 volts and all that sort of stuff using these uh these little plugs you just swap them around and um and plug the right one on as a uh, as specified in the manual now the main points of failure you're going to find in these things are the capacitors of course and uh, they can go bad with uh with time and um also you got some uh you may have carbon commas resist resistors resistors uh, these have the carbon composites. Some of the newer ones have a metal film resistor. So generally I just replace those with metal films as a matter of course because they do drift quite a bit at times. So um, there's a metal film one here. Well, that's actually a carbon film, sorry, a carbon film resistor. But that one there is uh, not a carbon composite, so that one's going to be fine. Um, the two transistors down here, they've got to be tested because uh, if they fail, they can blow your uh, modules when you plug them in. If you plug in an expensive module and this transistor's dead, or this one's dead, uh, and it blows your module, well, you're not going to have a good time. So we'll um, test those as well. And uh, yeah, have a look around. There's uh, a bridge rectifier in there and uh, some other capacitor and stuff. There's a, uh, looks like there's a capacitor that goes across the mains, but um, I don't know if that's a... Uh, a Z or a Y class. Um, I have to double check which one is needed there. If it's you know, from earth to uh, to line, or if it's cross line to uh, to ground, or line to neutral. Um, but yeah, that's pretty. It's pretty simple. There's nothing much going on. Some power switch, a few capacitors, bridge rectifier, some resistors like some load resistors and bleed resistors and whatnot, and two transistors which just come straight up to the uh, the connector here. And as you can see, there's a whole lot of corrosion and dust, so um, that can be uh, cleaned out too. So uh, I'll, um, I'll show you how to pull this out. It's, you can replace the capacitors in, 
like in situ, like you don't have to take the whole thing apart. It is a little bit of a pain in the bum sometimes, um, depending on how far you want to go. Uh, often you will uh, remove the four screws for the uh, transformer. And then uh, there's four screws here for the circuit board, two screws for the, uh, the transistors. And uh, once you've released that and released the power cable, it kind of all just comes out as one assembly, and um, then it can be uh, can be worked on. I have replaced the uh, the capacitor just by undoing the circuit board and the transistors, and just kind of lever it out. And usually, what I'll do is I'll get in there with some psychos and clip the um, the legs of these capacitors and just desolder them in place, so I don't have to um, you know, take the whole thing apart if I don't have to. All right, once you got your four screws here. Undone. In my case, I had to drill one out because it was uh, completely rusted. The two screws from your transistors, and the uh, four screws from your transformer, and then the uh, the back case will come off as well. Then you can kind of take it out a little bit, and there's a uh, this little thing here that's screwed in the little earth point down here. You just undo that nut, and it comes out just like that. So there is the two connections here, the fuse. You have to un unplug the fuse from the top of the switch, and then in my case, there's a blue wire that goes to the uh, the line cord, and that goes to the bottom of the switch. And then that is our transformer and uh, circuit board assembly removed. Looks like we've got another uh, carbon composite resistor sitting just there. That will be replaced. And there's that capacitor there. It's a uh, 0.02 or 0.02 is written there microfarad. Looks like a Z class. Uh, Z5U 1400 volts, so that's probably okay to leave there That looks like it's a Z class there. So we have one two and three Resistors to replace one just down in there Those two there and the uh, three capacitors as well one two and three and um, We can just check a few other things But there's two uh, diodes here. We can check and then on the back down right down inside there there's a, uh, a bridge rectifier which you can access here. You've got those four connections just there. So you can test that as well to make sure that's good. I think they're generally pretty okay most of the time. Don't forget as well, you've got these uh, plastic tubes. They go in through the screw holes of the transformer. Don't lose them because you don't want to be shorting those plates together when you put the, uh, the bolt through. Otherwise, you're going to create a shorter turn and um, you'll uh, smoke things. So there's one for each hole. Make sure they do go back. So on to the uh, next mainframe, because we're on to the next stage of the restoration, as I mentioned before. Uh, got our capacitors replaced there, much smaller than the old ones, because modern technology is a fantastic thing. And uh, all the resistors and capacitors and diodes test good. This one had carbon film resistors, so I didn't have to replace them, not like the earlier model that we showed before with these um, carbon composites. So uh, these ones could stay in there, those resistors were fine. And uh, you'll notice something different. This panel here. I'm not sure what serial number they started installing that, but there was like an insulating panel they put inside. And um, this one's all broken, it's got a big chunk missing here. And that's just a panel just so that if you put your hands in, you're not going to zap yourself or get a bite from anything in there. And just makes things look a bit neater and whatnot. So I um, talked to my good friends at PCBWay. PCBWay there. And uh, got some circuit boards, the usual batch of five, which is fantastic because I've got a, about five of these to uh, restore. And... Uh, Got these panels made up. So they got the uh, the like guide there, the legend on how to uh, set the uh, the voltage jumpers there, and um, yeah, they fit in perfectly, nice and smooth, perfect dimensions. The silk screen looks great. So yeah, no problems whatsoever on the PCB manufacturing. Fantastic. So if you want to get some of these made yourself, you'll find the uh, links to PCB way below and uh, links to the uh, Gerber files for the uh, PCBs themselves. Also, you'll need some brackets, two little brackets here, these like Z-shaped brackets, just bent up out of aluminium. This one uh, came with this unit, but my other units don't have the uh, panel, so I'll just get some uh, aluminium and bend them up. Um, you might be able to find something of the same size at a local hardware store, but I'll give you the measurements down below as well, so you can match it up and see what you can find or see what you can make yourself. So this unit is basically ready to uh, turn on and test, but there is one more thing that we'll have a look at. I've got another one of these mainframes we'll get on the bench, the third mainframe, and it has that, that thing installed. It's an option where you can have a rear panel connector here. See this panel and this little blanking plug? Um, there's a BNC that goes there and then like a DB connector, 50 pin 
a kind of standard computer serial style DB connector, which goes here and allows you to connect through to the circuit board. And um, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can see there's all these like unpopulated pads around the place. They get headers installed and you can connect the wires from that uh, connector, from the, uh, the rear DB connector, and just plug them wherever you need them for each pin of the, uh, almost every pin of the, uh, the edge connector here. So you can break out any signals from your module, you can break them out to the back panel and you know, wire them into your process or your machine or your production line or other test equipment rather easily. So I've done that on another one of these mainframes. Let's have a look and see what it looks like. Alright, so our third mainframe, and you can see there's a whole big bunch of wires in there. And a, a coax here, with a little uh, ground fly lead. They all can connect onto these headers which I've put everywhere, into the circuit board. And they come out to the back panel there, there we go with our BNC, and our 50 pin uh, DB connector. So that's the uh, option there you can install. Um, it's a bit tedious, it's just a matter of soldering a whole bunch of wires onto a connector, using the little uh, kind of DuPont-ish sort of... Uh, header kind of female pins. I'm not sure what they're actually called, but you can find them in DigiKey and whatnot. And uh, I've also numbered them all. So you you got number upside down, but number 44 there. Uh, hopefully you can see that. But all the uh, the wires are numbered with their respective pin. And I'll plug them on and um, I can get whatever's here, the signal's here, out the back here. So that is a completely finished unit. Of course, the option is an option. You don't have to do that. Um, I haven't actually seen any of these with that option installed. Doesn't mean that there aren't any out there, but it might have been a bit of a rare option. Most people don't generally need to use that. So um, I just thought I'd do it for the fun of the exercise. And just so I've got one that has that option in case I need it for some uh, obscure esoteric purpose in the future. So now it's on to testing. So let's... Uh, hook this up with the I'll uh, reach off the shelf here the mainframe tester which I built and I've featured this in a previous video and we'll do a quick test to make sure that it's all um, working correctly all right so we've got two mainframes here this is just an image I'll overlay screenshots from my scope um, on the test that we we're gonna do so uh, on the left of course is the uh, the new one with the uh, the tester installed and the right is the old one which um, off screen I'll I'll do all the tests and swap that model around and whatnot. So, uh, first up, we'll do a, a test on the plus 33.5 volt DC uh, in the old unit. And you can see in the bottom right ish corner of that image, uh, our peak to peak ripple uh, voltage is 1.37 volts. Now, on the module with the new capacitors, that uh, peak to peak value is 1.26 volts. So, we have dropped a little bit. Uh, not a huge amount because the uh, capacitors on the uh, unit I was testing don't seem to be too bad, but they can be quite worn out um, and you get a lot more ripple. But yeah, we have got a slight improvement there. So uh, as for the uh, negative uh, 33.5 volt, the old capacitors, we've got a, a ripple of 1.3 volts peak to peak. And then uh, on the new capacitors, we got the same 1.3 volts. So it looks like the old capacitor was actually still pretty good. Um, but I changed it anyway. Well, I'm going to change them all anyway, just so they're new and they don't uh, deteriorate, you know, in the near future. And the, for the last test, we've got the uh, AC windings. Uh, on the old capacitors, we've got 3.76 volts of peak to peak. And uh, with the new capacitors, we've got 3.7 volts. So uh, a slight, very small in uh, improvement there. So, um, yeah, those, those capacitors, which I was testing the old unit, like I said, they seem to be pretty good. Um, I didn't test the dissipation um, or the ESR or anything like that, so I'm not sure about transient response and, um, you know, dissipation. If it's got a high dissipation, they're going to have a high self-heating, and that can cause them to fail, because uh, the dissipation is basically the energy they're burning up inside, their leakage and whatnot. So I had, didn't test that at all. We're just testing the, uh, the raw output. But, um, yeah, there was a slight improvement. All right, so we got this one all done. That's all finished, ready to go. Fantastic. Got this one here and two others to uh, finish off, um, you know, later on. And uh, yeah, we're all done. So special thanks, of course, to uh, PCBWay for the fantastic PCBs. Never had a problem with their service um, and their quality. It's all fantastic, really good. They do have a, uh, a promotion on at the moment. So uh, check it out, link down below. 
uh, it's a uh, call for PCB design tutorials um, at the point uh, that this video was released that's the uh, current promotion they got so if you've got some uh, you know some experience or some uh, knowledge about designing PCBs anything from basic layout all the way up to uh, strip line and uh, high imp you know, impedance match and high frequency stuff uh, write a uh, an article about how to design a PCB uh, make a video whatever you want submit it to the site and if it's selected uh, you'll get um yeah, you can get some uh, credit for getting your PCBs made. So help out the community and you get a kickback and uh, get some of your stuff made. So uh, check that out. And um, that's all we got for this time. So I uh, hope you found that informative, interesting, and hopefully somewhat enjoyable. And we'll see you next time.